Liam Wong's colour grading may not reflect what the eyes see in Tokyo, but it captures what my heart and soul sees in Tokyo. Get everyone welcome to Liam Wong's Tokyo. Uh, this book was a very emotional experience for me. Uh, I love absolutely everything about the book and I never really appreciated street photography like this before. It's a very modern take on street photography. Uh, it was taken, I, I believe most of the images were taken with a 5D3 Canon and a 35 1.4 Canon L uh, Mark II lens. I just love the colours. Uh, it was published by Thames and Hudson. Uh, this image here is the one that he entered in the Smithsonian competition in 2016. Liam calls these uh, the bit of blur here imperfections, but I call that wabi sabi, and I love it. This photo was a JPEG, I believe, uh, shot on the Canon 5D3. and uh, all the settings were in auto so it must have been pretty dark there for the shutter speed to get that low uh, if he was using the 1.4 lens uh, he might have been just using a kit lens I'm not too sure but, but this image is absolutely one of my favourite and I can't believe it's one of his first This one's called Blade Runner Origins. And one thing I love about this book is it's called Tokyo. This is a clock. At the beginning, it's got no time. And then the, the time's Tokyo. So Blade Runner Origins was taken at uh, just before 18 minutes past midnight. Well, I assume this is the uh, the metadata where he's got these uh, times from. But uh, incredibly simple compositions, but the beauty is just incredible. I would have no problem having this as a large poster on the wall. So uh, Midnight Diner at 46 minutes past midnight, I believe is this shot here. Absolutely incredible. There are people in there, so it just gets you a sense of the space. But their identity isn't important. Here's another one of my favorites. I believe this is another early on photo. This image here is called Neon Noir. 11.50 p.m. and 20 seconds. William's caption is, a sea of umbrellas pass by with the lights of Shibuya crossing above. This photograph is one of the first, instance, first instances of my work where I played with color to emphasize the overall mood of the scene. With hindsight, I can see that it became an important image to launching my journey into photography. What I love about uh, Liam's work is lately I've been motivated by black and white photography, but this has really pulled me back into the world of colour.
This image here is uh, featured in a tutorial on Liam's work and how to edit like Liam. And this image is called One More Light. Well, I assume because the primary light in the scene is this little lamp. And it was inspired by a Linkin Park song called One More Light. Uh, Liam claims that he walked around Tokyo listening to music in his headphones. Here's a self-portrait of Liam. It's uh, bang on midnight. I just love the contrast between the, uh, the pinks here and the blues. It's actually this kind of blue that's my most favourite colour blue. It's like a light and dark as well. And I think what makes it interesting is Liam's not necessarily posing, he's wearing a mask uh, as a face covering, but he's putting a head over his head at the time so it's like an action shot. And I think that's fantastic, because you don't have to pose in your photos. I'll be doing a uh, video on the importance of self-portraiture coming soon. Again, this is uh, another one of my favourite photographs. This one's called One Sendai. Oh, sorry, Ono Sendai. And I think if you took away the Shin, uh, Shinto gate, this scene could be virtually anywhere in the world. Of course, they've got the kanji over there, but let's ignore that for a second. But with the kanji and the Shinto gate, this is just a masterpiece. The contrast between the light and dark here as well, with uh, light coming in at the back. It just gives the uh, image incredible weight and perfect balance. Uh, being in Japan on a rainy night is, is absolutely spectacular, seeing the neons reflect. And there is neons all around the world, but I think what makes Japan's neons incredible is the hiragana and kanji. Because as an English speaker, I don't, I, I can read basic kanji, of course. Um, you know, learning how to enter and exit buildings and reading number plates like Shinagawa and Kawasaki and whatnot. But there's like a sense of unknown and futurism to it. I'm only going to be going through a few more photos. I think this is uh, yes, Akihara Borough. If you've been to Akihara Borough, you know there's a, a very special seven story building. And I'll let you leave to the comments to let me know if you know what the one is I'm talking about. This is a uh, photograph that definitely changed Liam's direction when he first discovered that he was taking photographs of art. This one's called Taxi Driver. At 59 seconds past midnight. Uh, Liam said that he loved that he uh, lit the face of the driver perfectly. I love the, um, you know, instead of orange and teal, it's gone for yellow and blue with a hint of red. Uh, this is the, the, the vacancy symbol in Japan. One night it rained and the city came to life. I got lost in the beauty of Tokyo at night. I kept on taking picture after picture. It was like inside the cyberpunk world created by Sid Mead in Blade Runner. And I suppose this goes back to what I was saying about teal and orange. Uh, Blade Runner is a very typical two-toned film. And I can definitely see that inspiration coming through here. Uh, here's another self-portrait. This is another one of my favourite photos. I just love this turquoise blue colour. 
this one's titled Self Portrait in Midgar at 1am. Uh, it's interesting that his first portrait was at the bank on midnight and this one's at 1am so I'm wondering whether that's a symbolism that's going to go through the book. I'm not exactly sure where Midgar is but this does look like a Suntory beverage factory. I could be wrong. Some of this work reminds me of um, my first attempt at street photography the day I bought a Sony 85 1.8. So this photo here is magic and whilst street photographers all around the world take photos in the rain, uh, Japan's unique because these clear umbrellas are sold at all the convenience stores uh, very inexpensively and they're very good quality as well. Here's an image of the Lawson Station. This is uh, one of the convenience stores that you can buy the clear umbrellas. They're normally just inside the door. As daylight ascends, Tokyo's neons fade away. A new day begins as the city stirs. I capture a final few fleeting moments before returning home. And to finish the book off, there's some pages about composition and a contact sheet. I think it's important for photographers to share the contact sheet, just so we don't get caught up in this world of not being as good as another photographer, because, you know, the thousands of frames that don't work, and we only show the frames that do work. So it's incredibly brave of William to show his contact sheet here. Tokyo by Liam Wong is an absolutely fantastic book and it gets my greatest recommendation. It's the new era of street photography. There's no need to go out and get an old film camera whilst you know, you're entitled to do that. This just shows that you can do incredibly modern street photography on beautifully modern equipment and the 5D3 uh, definitely holds its weight. That's in incredible images and they're printed large. The detail is amazing. So I definitely recommend you pick up a copy of Liam Wong's Tokyo. Thanks for watching.